So please, Mr. Marcelo Medina, can you give your presentation, please? Marcelo Medina is a Spanish-speaking manager of disaster management of PIERC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. In English, please. In English? Yeah. In English? Is my presentation in English? Communication information. <laughs> <laughs> you need the you need to translate. Ah, necesitar el intérprete o no? Ok. Generalmente yo no utilizo micrófono, prefiero hablarles con a ustedes directamente. Now we can, yeah, now we can continue. Oh, this is better. Voy a hablar en español en esta exposición, así que por favor utilicen el dispositivo de intérprete. Hello, good afternoon. I'm engineer. I'm engineer Marcelo Medina, who is in charge of direct management, which is in-house working. In-house working, I am the chief of in-house working, and this manner of carrying out works is in charge of emergency as well, and also borders. When we talk about emergency, we're talking about communication, we're talking about information. Information. However, when we talk about information, we're thinking in this sort of image. And we are behind because communication has changed. We have communication that is very different. Just a piece of information, maybe data can be sent to everywhere in the world, just one person writing something, and we take that up to the cloud, and it can be shared with the entire world, and around the globe as well. To this manner of communicating. All this information, now we have technology in order to share this information. On the other hand, we have information, and I'm talking about database for information. We need also manners of creating emergency databases and information. So what I would like to talk about right now is this linking plan for roads administration and is focusing on these two problems when it comes to communication and information as well. A communication is to have timely information for users. Even if you're thinking that within an emergency information is the most valuable resource that we need, we need we ought to have that information during an emergency. So this plan, what it's trying to do is to generate from activation of the emergency then a generation of information from the area, the land, towards the first authorities, and subsequently those authorities need to report to higher authorities as well. So how can we do this? Just an overview, as an example. If, if an emergency is generated, we have a regional authority that needs to report on that event. This person activates the information. 
After all our teams for road administration goes to the place in order to collect data. And then we need to deliver this information that we are trying to collect here to this person who is going to activate the information. However, there is something special here. We have a machine here that is, look, that is telling us that we need to do something. It's not the same information that we are collecting from the place, from the location, the one that I'm going to provide to the authority. One example, we have a problem. Our agents go to the area in order to collect data, and they will say something like this. Sí, jefe, yo, yo, puedo, yo puedo traducir esto también. Entonces, ¿qué va a decir? Perdón, ¿qué va a decir esta persona? Vos, this is the road language. So the E465 2.5 kilometers approximately undermined in a loss of platform due to the erosion by the river flow. It is necessary to protect everything. And we have just listened that so many times. Es, es, es lo mismo, el mismo texto en inglés. So that Seremi will not understand that vocabulary. What is this person trying to tell me? Have you ever encountered a situation like this so if this person is going to provide this information to the public he would say something like the inspection commission indicates a problem of the platform due to the erosion of the increase of the river's flow we already cut the path and now the repair is estimated to cost 500 millions. So a person would say, oh my God, so even the workers use platform shoes. They don't have to understand the language, they don't need to do it. Other person could say, wow, that's a lot of money, why? And maybe another one would say, oh, so half of the money is going to that person's pockets. Somebody could just not understand anything at all. So what I will try to say is that if we say things like this, public in general, they will not understand what we're trying to say. However, if we consider this and we make a translation to everyday language, the one that is understood by people, and we will understand that Santa Ana Road, I'm not going to say the code, I'm just going to name the locations. And Lo Pinto talking about that the river has increased its flow and we're waiting for better conditions. So these are two very different manners of saying this. So when this person from the region is going to report to their authorities, to their bosses, he would say, OK, so when you are going to say this to the public, they will understand better. The Santana Road at the area of La Pinto, traffic is interrupted. There are alternatives. So people say, wow, very fast. So easy to understand. They'll say, poor people from Lo Pinto. So they now know of the place where the emergency is happening. And someone will say, what can we expect from public works? Uh, just always doing things tomorrow. And we have that person as well that will understand this information better. They will say, yes, crystal clear. So I can provide this information and to put it on clouds of information in order for the rest of those in charge at all levels can understand perfectly what this person is trying to report from 
the side. And like that, with different levels of decision making and with different objectives as well, they need to carry out different activities. We also have that each one of these levels have different uses of information. Also, the more detailed information is at the levels that are closer to the emergency. So people who are on site that are looking at this emergency will have more details, but towards the upper levels, they don't need that many details. Communication also with new technologies need to be at the disposal of people. So a cloud of information at the level of on-site can feed a new cloud of information to a higher level and to up to a level of headquarters and directorates, and etc. However, for this information, for this communication, we need also rules. It is not about sending anything through WhatsApp, for example. So this is an example of an emergency. This picture was supposed to be a sandstorm in the northern part of Chile in Arica. But once you Google that picture, it was in Abu Dhabi, in Saudi Arabia. And it was sent during an emergency saying, oh my god, this is a sandstorm in Arica. Do you remember that episode? And it was even worse because that was sent by Seremi, a government authority. So it was a big problem. We cannot do things like this. I'm supposed to be reporting the actual facts of the emergency. Also, we used to tend a lot in these messages. So when you have a long message, nobody is going to read it. No one is going to read something like this. Information needs to be precise, concise, very brief. Within the linking plan, you also have the possibility to see the questions that you need to answer. And we have things of these sort of things, jokes and things like that. No se permite este tipo de información. And on the other hand, and now we have the part because we've been, we've always been very good at communicating, sending this type of messages. When something happens on site, we begin sending messages full of information with everything that happened. However, when we talk about information, when we require information to record what happened, this activation, this information that is generated here, needs to be in some sort of man in some sort of manner collected in a systemic manner, in an ordered manner as well, and to be useful for engineers that will make different decisions and for the different technical levels that also need to be making these decisions. The main thing about this is that at this stage, we have the on-site collection of data. So what this person is saying here is what we need to record and save. So the position of regional directions is always to collect this data and also to record that in our system in order to create order and to generate this database. This is a very important database. You've seen all the examples that we've seen from Japan, the U.S. 
So, for how long have we been using this database? It's 2015. Recently, we've been using one with clear concepts, with a very well-established manner of using, and the national directions and directorates needs to support the registry of this information. And we have a new concept here, as Chris Nigel from Australia said in the morning, you have the upside-down pyramid, because a person who is important is the one sending the information on site, and government needs to support that the person on site. So what is the mistake that we've been making that would do the exact opposite? Government is trying to control information, and that has created several problems. And how do we realize about this is when we have different reports by the different institutions that require information. So we have people on site that instead of doing their work with the emergency, they're trying and busy doing reports for the different levels. So that is not efficient. We may say that it could be efficient because we tackle everything that we need to do, but when we have to collect information and analyze that information is when we find those problems, when, to when we need to share that information with the world. We encounter another problem and that we need to actually think in the same manner, with the same concept in order to share the information. So. All organizations need to cooperate in order to share vocabulary and the same concepts. Okay, when we're facing emergencies, we have different tools in order to face them. We have direct implementation, global and traditional contracts, which can all be linked to these emergency registries. And when we make the official declaration of emergency areas, each one of these paths that are and roads that are included here should have an emergency registry. They need to be declared as an emergency. Also, since we work as road administration with assets, because we're working with the roads and we need to know what is happening there, we need to, we can link all resources to this system, and we can link all associated resources to each one of the emergency registries. So I can also know how many people, how much money, how many machines and fuel I am using. Therefore, we can share this information, this systematic information, through the risk maps, road layers. But why can we do this? Because we have a database that allows that. With information through WhatsApp, that's impossible. But we can do this if we are actually doing this in a correct manner. And this is what we're looking for, to share information, risk maps. What we want to do is for this asset management, which is a road, to have a clinical chart of that road, to know what you need to do. And in these two worlds, we have, of course, that on this side, with what we share on WhatsApp, we have quick information. We have low details as well. We have a difficulty when it comes to management, and also it has a short-term scope because it's only to report what is happening there, but this information, the one included in a database, technical information, which is, of course, is low information, information that has more details, easily systematized, then it has a long-term scope because it will allow to obtain data from those roads with a history of what has happened. And since we're working with an asset management, we also have what is happening and everything that was invested in those roads. 
and I think I'm on time. Yes. Thank you very much.